really lovely to have you in in this orchard in the in the lost heart of mid devon in in the village of tedburn st mary um and and well could you tell us who you are and, and what we're doing here okay well, i'm keith edwards i'm professor of crop genetics at the university of bristol and i have two interests in life one is wheat one is apples um, specifically cider apples uh, and obviously here we're surrounded by lots of probably unique apple varieties and I'm interested in knowing a little bit more about them. So when I grew up through making cider I was shown the apple varieties that that were the, were the ones to make the best cider from and, and lots of them are in orchards like this. Mm -hmm. um, I reckon I know about 25% or 30% of them for sure. Many of them sadly men and women are in the graveyard that might have known <laughs> might have known what they are. So, so this for us is really exciting because we can't go and ask those guys the names of those apples and we'll probably never know those names. But you're not just able to sequence the gene because you're geolocating the trees. Tell me how, what, what the process is and what that's going to mean for me. That's correct. So what we're doing is we're fingerprinting every tree. We're getting a DNA fingerprint of every tree but we're also using what three words to identify its location. So once we have the fingerprinting data and we can either identify it as an existing known variety or a unique variety, we can go back to that tree and do whatever we want. For instance, take cuttings for further grafting, etc. And that will mean, and it's one of the things that I'm really excited about, we've discussed this, that will mean that if there are 11 of these interesting variety say one that we really think is is going to be suitable for a great cider because you've located them for us we're going to be able to go to the different orchards collect that fruit make single batch cider and and delve back almost genetic archaeology and find out what was that cider like and and we can repropagate those trees if, if you explain how well is one apple tree enough to to make a whole orchard Oh, of course, one apple tree. Well, I mean, you know better than I do in terms of the grafting capacity of a, an individual tree. But yes, once we have the fingerprint, once we know what it is, or once we know that it's not anything else, then it's entirely up to you. If you identify that as a good cider-making tree, then we can propagate it to a heart's content um, and make whole orchards of them. So, you know, one of the things that I want to say is, is a massive thank you to you and the University of Bristol for, for making cider the heart of this hugely important piece of research. Not, not cheap research to do. Um, and I've seen how hard you're working going tree to tree through some difficult orchards that I've sent you to. <laughs> um, but that's really exciting. And, and I guess this really is a watch this space moment. We're right at the beginning of a very, very exciting journey. I'm looking forward to, to showing your team how to make a bit of cider too. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, restoring knowledge that, well, we all thought we'd lost really. So, yes. I mean, we, we have in our data, for instance, the Brogdale collection has a, about a hundred cider varieties. Well, imagine, I mean, there must be several hundred, if not thousands of cider varieties that are unique to some geographical locations. That's our hope that we can identify them and preserve them for future generations future cider makers quite right well that's 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 very exciting and uh, and i know you've got another very big and very exciting orchard to go to next so thank you for taking a bit of time out to talk to us and uh, and um yeah can't wait to see the results you're welcome but first lunch <laughs>